Let's now take up the first question on gross value added statement. Okay. And reconciliation of that with the profit and loss account. What I mean is profit before tax. Prepare a value added statement for the year ended 31 3 2012 and reconciliation of total value added with profit before taxation from profit and loss account of futures limited for the year ended this is actually 31 3 2012 so you have income which is comprising of sales and other income then there are expenditure operating cost excise duty interest on bank overdraft interest on 10 percent debentures you have profit before depreciation, then depreciation, PBT, provision, provision after tax, proposed dividend, and some notes. The note says sales represent value of goods supplied after deducting discount, returns, and sales tax. Very good. Operating cost includes 8250 as wages and salaries and other benefits to the employees. The bank overdraft is treated as temporary source of finance. Now, just to recall, and if you uh, haven't had a chance to go through the previous two videos, you can go through them as well, where we've explained the concept of gross value added statement. So basically, in a gross value added statement, we try to find out what is the gross value added by the company. This gross value is considered as sales minus expenses okay these expenses are known as cost of bottom material and there are certain categories of expenses which are excluded now we had given you a draft format in the earlier video which was there what I will do is because this is the first question I will tell you how each of these items goes and sits there in that particular statement from the next question onwards we will try and write all of them to see how things move so your sales are 24,400 and you are told that sales represent value of goods supplied after deducting discount in any case it has to be after deducting discount the returns very good and sales tax so we will add the number of sales over here which is 24,400 this is the draft of the statement or the format which we had given you then you have other income now other income is not considered at the time of calculating the gross value because first we need to add or find out the value added by the trading operations right so once you get this you add the indirect income which is your other income in this case which is 508 so 508 is what we will add here right then operating cost is 21250 so once you have the sales number this is nothing there okay so the total will be 24400 in the outer column and 24400 now from the sales figure we will reduce the expenditure or the cost of bottom materials here all direct and indirect expenses come in except for these six expenditures right so when we look at the profit and loss account, we try to find out what are the expenditure which are to be deducted, but not any of these six. Now you are given that operating cost is 21250. So operating cost, normally this will come in this column, right? But we are just trying to explain this to you, is 21250. We'll just form another small column here. But this operating cost includes 8250 as wages, salaries and benefits to employees. Now I have told you that the direct expenses and indirect expenses except for the following six costs are to be included. You are told that in this 21250 there is an employee cost of 8250 but that is not supposed to be included in the expenditure side so we will reduce it from this number. Right? This gives you 13,000 then you have excise duty triple one zero now in case of excise duty basically what happens is that we recover the excise duty from the customer 
and we pay it to the government. So it is not an expense for us, right? And it is assumed that this excise duty is included in the sales figure. Therefore, this excise duty will be reduced. Or you can simply write it here as well. The next one is interest on bank overdraft. Now bank overdraft is what it is treated as a temporary source of finance. What is excluded is interest on long term finance. But you are told that the bank OD interest is a temporary finance interest. Therefore it will be treated as an expense and not an application. Interest on 10% debentures. Now debentures are obviously long term finance. So we will not reduce anything on account of interest on debentures from here. So your total expenses will now come to 14185. Right? Your value added by trading operation will be the total of income minus this number which is 10723. Sorry, this is 1021. Okay, let me just erase this. 10215. To that you add 508 and you get 10723. This is your gross value added. Right? Now this gross value added has to be shown as to how it is applied to various stakeholders. Which is 6 of these categories. So 10723 is the total gross value you have added. Now out of this how much go went to the employees? In the adjustments you were told that operating cost included 8250 as wages. So employees will be 8250. There is nothing given specifically on the director's cost. Government taxes. Now what do you include in government taxes? As we had discussed originally that even excise duty is a tax but because we recover it from the customer and we pay it to the government we don't include it as a application. What is considered as the application is the tax. How much is the provision for tax here? Which is 320. So we will add 320 over here as government taxes. Then long term finance holder we had some debentures right debentures 1200 these are who these are the long term finance providers so we will include it here let's talk about shareholders so what is it that the shareholders have got in the profit and loss account if we see carefully there is a proposed dividend for the shareholder which is 48 right so this is considered as an allocation to the shareholder and what is left with the entity? Entity basically comprises of all the reserves and the profit for the year which is transferred to the profit and loss account. So if I see during the year how much is the proposed transfer to the profit and loss account? It's 500. Right? Even depreciation as I told you when we prepare GVA is a reserve. So 500 plus 405. So 500 plus 405 905 right and the total will come to exactly the same number as the value which you calculated in gross value added statement right I hope you would have understood this video we will be preparing many more videos with different complexities in gross value added statement keep watching out for them thank you